Hi, my name is Kev Scott and in this Linear Thoughts video we'll talk through how to set up a static IP address on a printer. Before we go into the details of the change, it would be worthwhile thinking about why we want to make a printer have a static IP address. The main reason for that is if your printer is on a network, um, a home network or an office network, and uh, there are a number of computers joining and leaving that network as well, what will happen is your printer will keep changing its address and the result of that is that we end up with offline printers. Offline printers are a big problem because they can't carry out the basic function, you can't print them. Let's talk through an example of that happening. Assume initially we have a router, this router here is um, uh, typical of my home network and then we tr attempt to add a printer to that network along with two PCs. All devices on a network have unique network addresses. The example here shows the router with a 192.168.0.1 address. The actual number isn't itself isn't important. The important thing is that each device is unique in the numbering that it gets assigned. Once a router is set up on the network, the other devices then request their own IP addresses from that. In the example shown here, the printer is the first to ask. The printer then gets uh, passed a number back from the router and then is, uh, uses that number on the network. This process then continues with the other devices on the network. Here we see the PC button left requesting an address and being assigned one and then the PC top left requesting an address and getting assigned one in a similar way. If the PC bottom left was then to add this network printer, the printer would work quite happily and everything would seem fine. Where the problem arises is the next time the network is set up. Say for example the PC in the top left hand side is the first unit to join the network. It is then followed by the PC bottom left and then in this time around the printer is the third device to join the network. You will see that the devices are assigned different IP addresses this time around. The problem we have is the PC bottom left, although it has a new IP address itself, is still looking for the printer on the original IP address and as a result of the IP address being changed through this new, new network being powered on, it can't see the printer and this is the reason we get a printer offline message being shown on that PC at that point in time. If you were to look on forums for solutions to this problem, there, there are a number advised there and in fact one of the most common ones advised by Microsoft itself is to reinstall the printer driver on the PC in question. That will solve the problem in the short run because what will happen is the new IP address of the printer will be used but if you have a network with a reasonable number of devices on it there's a very high risk the next time you turn the network on and the sequencing of the devices is different again you again will get into an, an, a, a problem with offline printers as they, there's a change of IP address means that uh, the, the, the problem will arise yet again. OK, that's enough on the problem. How do we go about sorting this? There are three stages that we need to carry out. First thing we need to do is we need to reserve some static IP addresses in the router so that it's not allocating an address to the printer each time it turns on. Second step is to change the printer itself so that it doesn't ask for an IP address anymore but just uses a static one that we've given it. And the third and most straightforward of the three steps is just to remove the old printer from printer driver from the PC and add a new printer to use that fixed address. And once that's been carried out, uh, we won't have any problems anymore with offline printers. Okay, let's go and set up the router. Uh, routers normally have the full range of uh, IP addresses set up to automatically allocate numbers. And what we're going to do is reduce the top end of that number range so that it reserves some, some locations that we can fix the printer at in terms of its IP address. So let's, let's get that underway. Here's my router setup page. Uh, you're looking for something like LAN IP setup. And within that, there'll be a range of addresses that are used as DHCP server. 
We're taking the 254 number and changing that to 240. Having done that, we're now going to apply these changes to the router. So um, we're now going to apply here. The router now tells us that uh, changes to the IP address will require the router to be restarted. So we accept that and the address range is now reduced as required. The next thing to do is change the printer so that it uses a static IP address rather than asking the, the DHCP server for one. There are two types of printer that we could be looking at here. Um, there are some printers that have a control panel on them and it will be possible to directly change these settings through that route. The printer I have here is one that doesn't have those facilities and uh, the, the way we're going to demonstrate by doing it here is through a web-based interface. To access it through the web, the first thing we need to do is to find out what address it is currently set up at. And one of the easiest ways to do that is usually to get your printer to print out a diagnostic page. Uh, and the example shown here uh, is a printout from my printer and if we look at this particular aspect here, we can see that its current IP address is set to 192.168.0.8 and by typing that number directly into an internet browser we should be able to access the printer control panel directly. Okay, having obtained the IP address from the printout, I'm now on the web page and accessing the printer settings. What we're going to do here is change from an automatic IP address to a manual IP address and I'm going to choose an IP number that is higher than the limit I set in the router. So we set the limit at 240 in the router so we're going for 250 here just to give some, some, some margin there. In terms of the subnet mask, um, set it to what the printout previously advised it was set to. Typically that's 255, 255, 2550. And then apply those changes, and the job is done. Having finalised the printer setup, we now come on to the final stage, which is deleting the printer currently set up on your PC and replacing it with one that uses a static IP address. Here we see the devices and printer window on my PC, and we can see that the the desk chip printer is greyed out, is shown currently shown as offline. If we look at the properties associated with that and go into the ports, we can see that uh, the printer is currently set up 192.168.0.8. We can also see earlier IP addresses where printer drivers have been uh, installed as well as an opportunity to try and address this. What we're going to do now is remove the printer and uh, now add a printer. As the printer dialog comes up, we select a network printer. Just allow the PC to search for the printer and our printer at its new static IP address 192.168.0.250 should appear. Just searching just now. Uh, should be coming up soon. And there we have it. It's found the printer again, but this time at the static IP address. So we can stop this the scan now. There's no other printers on this network. Select that. Move on. The PC is now talking to the printer. It's established that we already have a driver for this, because that makes sense. It's the same printer we had previously. So we'll just carry on with that. And uh, give it a name. Uh, initialize the system. Uh, in my case I don't want to share the printer with other users and I can print a test page to check everything's okay and it is highlighting that it is. That concludes this video and hopefully this has been of some benefit to you in terms of addressing your offline printer problems. For more videos and more tips on technology in general please visit our website at www dot linearthoughts dot co dot uk